How's it going, everybody? Do you want to learn how to speed bridge like this? Or maybe even like this? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. I'm also going to show you how to do some alternative methods like upwards bridging, downwards bridging, long slash safe bridging, and overhead bridging. And don't worry about what device you're on, because I'm going to be teaching you how to bridge on PC, controller, and on mobile as well. Chapters will be linked in the description for all the different parts of the video. So if you're a PC bridger, you can skip to the PC part. If you're a mobile bridger, you can skip to the mobile part. But I recommend watching the entire video because there's a lot of good information in here. Anyways, guys. Guys, let's get in. Alright, so we're in the game, and as you can see, I got my keystrokes thing on the bottom left of the screen. It's so you guys can have a better understanding of how to actually do these bridges. Now, the first thing we need to learn about is the difference between Java bridging and bedrock bridging. While well, bridging on Java, you actually have to place the block on the face of another block. You can't just place it anywhere. But on bedrock, you can actually place it anywhere where the block is supposed to be, and the block will actually place, which is pretty cool and allows for a really cool different bridging methods. Let let me show you an example. So on Java, you'd have to do something like this. You'd have to actually look at the block and then place like this, which is kind of inconvenient. It's not really good for it when you're trying to actually bridge. It's pretty slow and it's honestly not that good. But on Bedrock, you can look in the area that you're actually supposed to place and you can just place the block there. See, I'm not even touching any block. I'm just placing in the area that it's supposed to be and it's placing the block. One thing that I do want to mention is that you see this little black outline around this block right here. If you don't see that black outline, you won't be able to place the block. See, look, I'm clicking my right click and it's not working. But once I see that black outline is there and I try placing the block, it's going to work. I'm just going to keep going up until it doesn't show anymore. See, it doesn't show. And then as soon as the outline shows, place the block, it places. Now let's actually get into learning how exactly to bridge. Now, first off, we're going to start off with our PC and controller players out there. Since bridging on PC and bridging on controller are so similar, I'm going to teach you how to do them both. And don't worry, my controller players, I will also be showing you how to do it with a controller as well just so you know because I, I i know how to do it i know how to do it okay so <laughs> don't worry about the controller players I'll, I'll show you i'll show you one tip i do recommend for controller players is turning up your sensitivity from anywhere from about 85 to 100 because if it's anywhere lower than that it's pretty hard to actually do the bridges since your cursor is moving so slow and you kind of need your cursor to be a little bit fast for this type of bridging method i mean it is possible to do it with a slow cursor but it's just it's a lot easier to do it with a faster one rather than a slower one. Anyway, let's get into the actual bridging. So there's two different types of ways you can actually start a bridge. There's momentum startups and non-momentum startups. Basically, the only difference between the two is in the momentum startups, you actually have momentum, so you're actually moving. And in the non-momentum startups, you're just not moving. So that's basically just standing in one spot and starting your bridge like that. So we're going to start off with the non-momentum bridging first because that's a bit easier to learn. So what you want to do is you want to stand on the edge of a block and just place in the air like this. Just how I showed you before, all you want to do is just place in the air and make sure you see this little black box. Now we can actually start incorporating the movement. So let's add another step. So what you want to do is hold right click and look down just like that. So all you want to do is just keep repeating that over and over again. Hold right click, look down and just keep doing that. Once you got the hang of that, we can actually incorporate some movement now. So we can actually start walking forward. So what you want to do is hold right click, look down and just start moving forward like this. See, um, it, <laughs> I'm I'm speed bridging. That's literally all it is. One tip is that you want to make sure that you always hold on to your right click while you're speed bridging because if you don't hold on to your right click, this is what happens. You just <laughs> you just fall off. That's uh that's pretty much how it works. See, even if I start bridging and then let go and then hold back on, it still doesn't work. So you got to make sure you're holding the click. The cool thing about that though is that if you hold your click and just, I just wait here. Let's say if I just wait here for like 5 seconds and then I decide to walk forward, I can still place. See, I can even start jumping too. It, I could just stop right here and then keep placing. All right, now we can actually incorporate some sprinting and jumping. One thing to note though, is that you never want to jump at the beginning of your bridge or else it's going to look a little something like this, where you just completely fall off. And uh, yeah, we definitely don't want that. So don't jump at the start of your bridge. You can still sprint though. So what I recommend doing is waiting until you've placed at least like one or two blocks and then start jumping. So we can start sprinting like this to start our speed bridge normally 
like this, and then we can start jumping like that. Another important thing to note is that you always want to make sure you have your cursor in between this line and this line. Because if your cursor goes off those lines, you're not going to be placing the block. Let me show you an example. So if you run and jump like this, and you see how my cursor is in between those two lines? If I move my cursor off in between those two lines, the bridge stops. So it's very important that you actually have your cursor in between those two lines. Alright, now that we have the basic speed bridge down, the non-momentum speed bridge, we can actually move into the momentum speed bridge. So the momentum speed bridge, it's pretty much almost identical to the non-momentum speed bridge, except you're moving. It's basically just add one or two steps and then you got it. So to do it, you have to look away like two or three blocks. So from where you're standing, let's say if I'm standing at this block right here, I have to look two or three blocks away from me. It could be two to four. I could do it there, but I recommend two to three because that's a good distance. So what you want to do is go look two or three blocks away, start moving, and then jump and look down slowly. I mean, you could look down fast too. Let me show you. This is what happens if you look down fast. You can also, you also look down really fast like that. It honestly doesn't matter at the speed you look down as long as you're not looking down too slow. So let me show you again. All you want to do is start moving, hold, right click, look down, and press space bar. And then that's pretty much it. These jumps, you can actually hold jump at the beginning, unlike the non-momentum speed bridge, because you have to jump to get on top of the block. So it doesn't really matter either way. Now let's move on to the mobile speed bridge. Now speed bridging on mobile is going to be a lot different than doing it on PC or controller because it's a lot different. Since you can't just hold down and right click like in PC and controller, you're basically just stuck rapidly spamming. So what you want to do is move your finger up and down just alternating them and that's you just want to do that like really fast so you just want to move them up and down really fast like this and just tap on your screen now there's two different ways to bridge on mobile you can either use split controls or you can either use tap controls if you decide to go with split controls it's a bit easier because you don't have to worry about aiming necessarily you can just tap really fast and just go but on tap it's a little bit different because you actually have to aim where you want to speed bridge it's a little bit more difficult but it's still possible so let me show you on split controls first. So what you want to do is look down just like you do on PC. Look down at an angle, like place the block right where the block is supposed to be, and then just start spamming your fingers like this. Obviously, I'm not very good at this because I don't have a lot of practice on mobile while speed bridging, but it is definitely possible. It's definitely possible to become somewhat skilled at bridging like this. The mobile bridging method is something that takes a lot more practice than PC and controller actually does, just because it requires a lot more accuracy and stuff like that, but it's not that hard to do. Now, if you want to bridge using tap controls, it's basically the exact same thing as the split controls, except you have to actually aim where your fingers go. For example, I have to actually look down and aim like this, just tap really fast, and yeah, you'll pretty much get the bridge down. Now, this is not going to be easy by any means, because I'm obviously, I'm obviously not very good at this. If this was easy, I'd be getting this, but trust me, if you keep practicing, you'll You'll get it down. All right, that includes the basics of how to speed bridge. Now let's learn about the alternative bridging methods. The first one we're gonna start off with is upwards bridging. Now upwards bridging is very simple. All you gotta do is just place two blocks and then jump up. Simple as that. Look down, place two blocks, and then jump up. And then just rinse and repeat like this. Now let's move on to downwards bridge. This bridging method is a bit more difficult because it's just a bit more complicated than regular speed bridging, but it's not that hard to learn. Once you get it down, you'll be good. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you're at least two blocks high. So you have to have a two block width. For example, if I make a little speed bridge right here and it's only one block thick, I have to place another block up like this to actually start the bridge. Now what you want to do is sneak to the edge of this block right here. Look at this second block down here. Make sure you're holding shift. And then what you want to do is simultaneously hold right click, let go of shift, and then press shift again, just like this. So hold right click like this, let go of shift and then make sure you hold shift again so you don't fall off the map. <laughs> that would definitely be very bad. So yeah, all you want to do is create a two block high platform. For example, this, I don't need to do that because it's already more than two blocks high. So I can just sneak to the edge, hold right click, and then unshift and then reshift, and then basically just let go of right click. All right, that concludes downwards bridging. Let's move on to actually long bridging or safe bridging, however you like to call it. So the purpose of long bridging is to actually not get knocked off 
by a person on the other side. So basically, if you want to do this bridging method, you have to look four to five blocks away from you. So unlike regular speed bridging, you want to look pretty far away from you and you do not want to move your cursor down. Make sure that you don't look down while you're doing this, at least when you're starting. So it's basically just like a regular momentum bridge, except you're doing it like this. So you got to hold right click, move forward without your cursor looking downwards. And then you could just start moving your cursor like this up and down, up and down, or you could just hold it like this. No matter what, it, it still works. Now you have to make sure that you time the jump correctly, because if you jump too early, the jump might not work and you might fail just like I did right there. But if you time the jump correctly, it should look a little something like this, where you're bridging correctly without hitting the block. Now, if you're finding that a little bit too difficult, you can always run into the block. For example, if I just do the same exact thing, but I run into the block, it still works. Now let's get into our last bridging method. This bridging method is sort of proprietary and you won't use it a lot unless you play the bridge. So this bridging method is what I like to call overhead bridging, which is basically where you bridge over your head. It is, it's kind of self-explanatory. So the purpose of doing overhead bridging is to actually get head hits so that you move faster. So what you want to do to actually do overhead bridging is create a little three block tall platform right here. So for example, you could basically just start off how you do like a regular non-momentum speed bridge and basically just place three blocks high like that. And now what you want to do is look at this top block right here or this third block right here and just hold right click and then slowly look up just like this. So if I hold right click and slowly look up, I should be doing the overhead bridging. Now you can always jump and do whatever just like that. You can always just jump and make yourself go faster. But sometimes it doesn't work on servers because you might lag and it might not place the block, which stops the bridge from actually working. So you might have to test this out by yourself. But anyways, guys, that's going to be in this video. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on that notification bell so you miss any single one of my videos. And if you guys have a different bridging method that I didn't cover, make sure to put it in the description. But anyways, guys, that's me over and out.